hello. Thank you for showing up. Uh, the goal of our talk will be to talk about primarily how you cost turns when you're routing on a given uh, road network. Um, the motivation for this is that, uh, as you can imagine, when you're going along any sort of trip, uh, turns are a large part of the overall trip time. Um, so to demonstrate that, we'll actually do a simple turn analysis where we'll just do some descriptive statistics around you know, uh, co the cost of a turn in an overall trip. And then we'll take a kind of more robust approach to demonstrate the representativeness of, of not just turns, but the interaction of turns against certain types of road classifications. And then we'll make some general takeaways uh, for you if you're ever considering uh, applying this um, in your own use cases. Um, so I will describe uh, typically, as you can imagine, if you're familiar with the OSM road network, uh, distances between nodes might be described as ways. And you can think of the cost traditionally of traversing a given segment is a function of the speed on the road versus the distance of that way length. Uh, but there is also the cost of maneuvering through every single individual node, right? So a transition. So if you look at the left, or excuse me, the right uh, diagram, you'll see that, you know, in a traditional inter four way intersection, you have the option of either you can actually U turn, but you can move forward, right, or left. Um, and those different types of turn maneuvers actually have different quote unquote costs associated with them. Um, and in a routing engine, oftentimes you can actually just assign a sort of flat cost for each of these different types of turn types. Um, and then you will actually see that manifest in a complicated, you know, uh, routing suggestion when you're trying to move from point A to point B. Uh, here's an example showing just a typical, I think this is a yeah, 3.1, three kilometer uh, route uh, moving through a part of Oakland. And you can actually see that if you look at the speed along the segments, uh, it is could be traversed in 50% of the estimated route time. Um, and why is that? Because certain types of maneuvers, again, have these certain types of costs that then sum up to the total trip time of our ETA. Um, you can be a little bit more robust when you're doing your uh, turns. For example, if you have a known uh, costly turn um, in, in routing engines such as OSRM, you can actually provide custom way-to-way -way costs. So you can actually identify flag certain high-cost intersections. However, uh, even though that's the case, you might want to have something that's uh, less specific, but more descriptive to areas, right? So what is the cost in a general type of area or in a general type of environment for different types of turns? Um, so just since we're in Richmond, we'll do a demonstration quickly with Richmond. And first, what we'll do is describe sort of an observation from our live vehicle data. And we'll identify, given a, given, given a trace, the uh, time it takes to make certain types of turns and we'll based on their bearing from the entering the turn and exiting the term and then we'll calculate an approximate duration from the entry of that turn to the exit of that turn. Um, so in Richmond we'll also segment out just as an example we'll segment out the urban core we'll call it of Richmond which you know I naively highlighted as one part of Richmond and then a general broader area based on the political boundary of Richmond and what we'll do is we'll cost both the turns will cost all the turns in this area, and then we'll segment them by the two. And when we do this, you can start to see different distributions. So along the x-axis, you see the bearing moving from zero to 180 for right-hand turns and zero to negative 180 for left-hand turns. And you can see uh, that there are actually, a, there's a tighter distribution within the urban area, and that's likely a reflection of the more normalized grid network compared to if you look at the broader region, which is composed of many a more, a more diverse uh, set of road classifications, everything from, you know, motorways and trunks to freeways to, uh, you know, things that you would also find in the urban core. Um, and we can summarize this data, again, looking at bearings as the x-axis and duration on the y-axis. And we can take, uh, we can take the average in this case of both. And we can look at for right-hand turns, a distribution of cost in terms of time. And then on the left hand as well, you can actually see that the costs for urban areas, which is highlighted in orange here, are more standard, right? Uh, given, the, given the network, you can actually see that right hand and left hand turns bear greater similarity. However, uh, left hand turns in the broader region or in the more suburban area, you will see have a generally higher cost. And you can imagine just thinking about uh, left hand turns, you know, being yielding on major roadways or arterials being more costly. So this is just sort of makes sense intuitively. However, you can actually demonstrate this in terms of cost. And you can imagine if you are running an OSRM, uh, if you're running a routing engine within Richmond, you might actually want to identify different zones or different types of typologies and basically account for different types of turn costs given the context that's being moved through. 
Um, and then you can also identify if you are trying to be conservative or estimate the degree of uh, volatility around moving through different areas. You can actually see that right-hand turns are far more stable. This is uh, P50 through P95 at varying intervals. And you can actually see that left-hand turns actually have a greater degree of, you know, let's call it volatility in terms of the potential cost of making a left-hand turn um, even in urban areas. And you can see that applies and is exaggerated as well in suburban areas. Um, and so you can actually do this either, uh, you can do this as a function of the bearing, or you can actually begin to categorize these patterns and begin to see typical cost differentials between urban or suburban areas. So here we've just described these as types of turns, you know, whether you're moving through slight right to a U-turn. Um, and of course, you know, just as I demonstrated with the urban versus suburban dichotomy in Richmond, it's actually, uh, you know, this is a, uh, in larger cities, you will see more exaggerated differentials. And of course, What's important is, you know, not just at the at the scale of an urban area, but if you are running a global routing engine, there are different costs for different regions. So you can begin to cost, you know, and do comparisons against here's uh, a city in Germany, Frankfurt, United States, here Richmond, and then Tokyo, Japan. And you can actually see uh, the differences in, t in costing of turns. One thing that's interesting, for example, here is that Japan actually has a far more consistent turn cost for both left and right hand turns. Whereas uh, the United States and Germany actually have greater variability, uh, very variation and, vari and volatility uh, for uh, different types of turns. Um, so at this point, I will pass it over to Jamie um, to dive into some more details. Cool. So <clears throat> Juan has been talking about basically the time that it takes to come into a turn and then get back out of the turn. Um, and I want to take a little bit of time to put these turns into the context of larger trips. Um, and so the question that you're starting out with is the share of the trip's cost that is associated with an intersection versus going down the way. Um, and I'm going to use super simple techniques, just OLS regressions on the timing, the, abs the actual time of arrival of traces um, on ways and nodes of increasingly complex types. So I'll just start with the way length or the intersection. Um, and this is going to give us ways and nodes, their costs in seconds, sort of on the same footing. So it's seconds per meter, so the one over the speed, or the seconds per for an intersection. Um, and these are costs that can be applied into a routing engine. These are costs that you can sort of intuitively understand. But as you'll see there, there there's a certain amount of complexity in how the OLS fit uh, treats, treats the data. So this is a, it's a different way of trying to understand how much each, each turn costs. So in this case, I'm going to be using data from Japan. This is just Tokyo, but we're map matching the traces to get sequences of OSM nodes. Uh, and going from intersection to intersection, when you reach an actual logical intersection, there's a bearing coming in and a bearing coming out. That's your turn angle. And we'll aggregate up the ways both by the road class from OSM um, and the angle of those turns. So we have a set of way lengths that is motorway, a set of way lengths that is motorway length, a set of way lengths that is trunk, and so forth. Or you can aggregate them to be motorway plus trunk, all of the link segments. Um, you can take all of your intersections, and those may be sharp uh, left, sharp right, and so forth. And they may be sharp right where the maximum uh, road class is motorway, trunk, and so forth. Okay. And so basically, you're saying all of those pieces, all of those things that you traverse have a total cost. You're going to add up all of those costs, and that's going to give you some estimated time of arrival in this OLS regression. And so here, I can't walk over there because the video will lose me, but maybe you can see this, right? So we have an actual intersection here. Um, we started out with ways that are, are, are a, a trip that is blue. There's an OSRM match. We have way lengths that get uh, cut off at these edges, and then there's intersections that we're going to. Um, and so the simplest possible model that you would write down, right, is that it, the time that it takes you to get from the start of your trip to the end of the trip is the distance divided by the speed. You can run that as an OLS regression if you just don't have an intercept and you basically are just plugging in a proportionality between distance and uh, speed. And the speed that you get for the sample of trips that we're using in this case is 26 miles an hour, which is taking into account all of the actual stopping that you're doing. So it's maybe a little bit slow, but it's reasonable for the average speed if you were to just put yourself on cruise control and blast through Tokyo. 
The first intersection model, we can put in literally all of the intersections and what's going to happen, right? Each of those intersections takes up time. And so you have a certain amount of time that gets spent in the intersection that comes away from the time that it takes to get through the whole thing. And so for the balance of it, uh, you're going to be moving faster, right? The other way of thinking about this is that on the parts of your trip that are not intersections, you're moving faster um, than you would be if you were just moving through your entire trip at a constant speed. And the result that you get here, again, I think basically makes sense. You have a 45 mile per hour implied speed when you've taken out all of your intersections and you have a six second hold up. So this is the simplest version. Does this basically make sense what we're doing? You're just adding up all of the things um, that you have to traverse. And those things can be simple and intersection, or they can get increasingly elaborate. And so those things can be you know, motorway meters, trunk meters, link meters, and so forth. It can be a left-hand turn, a right-hand turn, an intersection, left-hand turn on a motorway, and so forth. And what I like about this, although it'll get complicated, you'll see in a moment, is that you can split out your uh, intersections by um, you know, both angle and also where you are in the world, be it Japan, be it DC, be it uh, wherever, or the urban core of Richmond or outside of its urban core. Okay, so sounds great so far. This is the first real model. So let's fit uh, a sort of basic uh, set of the OSM ways, so motorway trunk, primary, secondary link, a tertiary link and residential and some others. And out of the box, the OLS regression basically gets it right, right? So you have an implied speed that falls uh, with road class. And you have, in this case, this is Japan. So the right-hand turns are a little bit more costly. They take four seconds more. That seems right. Going through an intersection is not that costly. It's a second versus making a real turn um, is more costly. So the, the simple version of this is, is working. Um, you'll notice also that basically all of the parameters in this regression are significant because we're using pretty large samples. So I'm just going to drop that on the sec sub subsequent pages. Um, basically, everything is precisely estimated. So now we can start to break this out into turn costs by max road class. And in this case, I'm just showing you the uh, speeds that are implied uh, for these collapsed road classes and the associated costs of left and right-hand turns, and then a single road cost. So the speeds um, in this yet more complicated uh, yet more complicated model remain more or less intuitive, right? You have the correct quote-unquote ranking of speeds, but the left and right-hand turns uh, are more different. So what if we split the straightways um, by type or residential? And what happens is that in motorways, the intersection is not what matters, but in the residential roads, it's the intersection that gets all of the costs. So you end up calling it 10 seconds for the intersection and pretending that the speed of going along these residential mode is 65 miles an hour, which is not an intuitive way of thinking about this. But when you're thinking about the speed of getting through, what is the cost? That's, um, that's what's happened. The nodes have overtaken the edges. And so when you use a regression uh, around the world, you can have uh, what might seem like unreasonable parameters that are going to show up because the meaning of node and ways sort of uh, can shift between those two categories or those two ways of dominantly costing. I'm going to skip this mostly since we're close to time. Um, but you can use these regressions to apportion the time between uh, ways and nodes and unsurprisingly off of highways, the more important part or a, 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 an important part is the, is the intersections. So as takeaways, the turns are a significant portion of the overall trip costs, especially in the minor roads. We should be considering turn direction and angle that's integrated in most routing engines. Um, we can also include road classes, context by region, country, density, time of day. It's nice to have the semantic clarity of buffering specific intersections because you know this is the time that it takes to go into and out of, but that's also a way length that is taken out of the adjacent ways that you've effectively glommed onto that intersection. The LLS apportions between those two. Um, you can imagine getting better precision uh, you know, by using a simple ML model. 
but the OLS results give you something that you can lift out, bring to a routing engine and intuitively understand. Thanks. Thanks.